There are, there are many challenges uh, that families face. Well, I think the, uh, the most, uh, you know, like impacting our lives, our, our everyday lives, is uh, how, to, um, how to be, well, to fulfill its functions economically and also socially and culturally. Meaning, how to be um, good providers for the family so that the children can, uh, can, uh, uh, can, can go to school, can have uh, all good conditions for, for their development. And uh, and how to uh, manage the um, the the work the work life with the family life. I think this is becoming more and more important because we have economic crisis, we have problems with, with uh, unemployment, and there's more much more competition at work now. So parents spend uh, long hours at work, and how to reconcile this family life with work life is becoming a, a big big challenge today. Yes. So. Um, Basically, we, um, we think that uh, to concentrate on po family poverty is very important still in the world because we still have, have um, poverty, despite the big progress that has been done at the global level, uh, we still have countries and we we'll have uh, communities that are just very poor. And this is also with in, in developed countries. So we think that if we focus on families, how we, we can have better results with um, uh, fighting poverty overall. And we already have, have uh, you know, uh, proof of that. So that's the first, uh, the first um, theme. The second theme is work-family balance. We think it's, it's, it's becoming more and more important um, to, to raise awareness about this issue and show ways and policies that can help with, with um, uh, ameliorating the situation in, in this area. And the, and the third theme that we have is intergenerational relations um, and solidarity between generations because we, we think that this is more and more important because, the, um, because of the trends that we have, for example, the aging of populations, youth unemployment. Um, so these are the three issues that, that we think we should focus our efforts um, how to help families in these areas. Civil society has a very important role. So I, I, would, I would say there are several. Uh, number one, well, civil society can help families themselves. So like um, Acer Familia or IFFD, uh, they are already working with families. So this is uh, through educational system, for example. I know there, there are schools that mm, have very integrated approach to education. Um, that civil society can help, you know, uh, establish such schools or, or have an active role in them and be in touch with parents in that. Uh, then there are courses um, like parental education courses that civil society can, uh, like AFFD is, is supporting. Um, there are different ways of, of helping in the, in the community with, the, with um, uh, how to help uh, families uh, that are poor, how to, how to get resources for them, how to help them, let's say, get, get training so that they can have a job. Um, so civil society can, can do a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, programs at the lo local level. But I think also civil society has a, a growing and important role of lobbying the governments for the issues they care about. So I think that um, they, uh, they are. They represent society, right? They represent groups of society. They represent cer certain certain um, interests in the society. So uh, showing the united front, and I would say uniting with other NGOs who care about the issues, similar issues, and presenting the the proposals to the governments. I think it's very important lobbying. Well, if, uh, for example, in France, I mean, there's there's quite a high uh, fertility rate and also very high participation of women in labor force. So this can be reconciled. This is a question of, I think, choices, giving women choices and giving them many choices. So let's say uh, in France there are many types of uh, care for children. There are very, very, very small um, uh, enterprises, uh, they, they are bigger. I mean, and th there is also flexi flexibility in work. For example, women can work part-time and they, some can work from home. Uh, so I think these, these possibilities 
uh, are, you know, the, the choices, if they exist, uh, then women are more comfortable taking decisions, having more children, if, if they have these conditions. And actually, uh, what really works is, is this flexibility, work family, uh, to, so, that, so that women can uh, have a choice, continuing career or uh, being at home, you know, for a certain amount of time. And also, what's important is to make sure that a woman, if, if a woman would like to stay at home for some time, uh, she can go back to work. I think this is a more, more and more important, important uh, in, in all regions of the world. So intergenerational solidarity, what we have in mind is that um, all generations feel united, that they really depend on each other. Because um, in reality, we, we, are, we, are, we, don't, we are not independent in this world. I mean, we always depend on, on, on our parents or, or we, we depend on, on our part. Um, uh, maybe a spouse or our our children are dependent on us and then our our uh, grandchildren may be dependent again if the parents are at work on us again so um, first to realize that uh, we, we need to also ha have this notion of reciprocity because uh, I think if uh, um, if the parents were really uh, taking care of the uh, educating their children properly uh, also showing respect for their own parents so in this case for the grandparents of their children I mean the children also have a have a better idea how to how to deal with their own parents when they are old and there are initiatives I think that there is a very good one um, that they have in Australia and, and Hungary for example is that um, the grandparents or I think it's either parents or grandparents uh, get subsidies if they stay with their children or grandchildren, whatever the case may be, for two years, and they get subsidies. So they can choose the family member. They could, could be the grandfather, for example, and he will get the subsidies. So instead of paying the, let's say, for um, kindergarten, it's the, the payment is given to the member of the family. Um, and this works very well because the grandparents take care of the grandchildren, there is exchange of cultural values and so it, and it's also appreciation of, of, the, um, of the older persons. Yes, I think that well the academic institutions have a very important role to play in all this because um, the, we have a lot of studies, uh, you know, statistics about uh, different trends in families and how it affects the children, how it affects society, community and all that. So I think academic institutions by, let's say, doing surveys with families and at different economic level, they can show examples uh, what, what's working, what's not working. Also, it's very important uh, what academic institutions do is the evaluation of, of some policies, how they work. And we are talking about general policies, let's say socioeconomic policies, even let's say pure economic policies, how they affect families. I think it's very, very important because Often governments don't realize what the effects on the families can be. Could be, for example, they may have good intentions, but maybe the result is not so good. So we need these constant evaluations, how to improve those policies. And also uh, the academic institutions that work for education, you know, not, I think they have, there has to be more understanding that it's not only children that are educated. Because there has to be more contact with, with parents and how parents can help. Because we have a lot of evidence if parents are educated themselves, if they, if they understand that uh, they have to even just show interest in, in children's homework, in children's academic achievement, then the children achieve, achieve better. And we have evidence on that. So just to show parents what they can do, I think it also empowers parents. So educational pay, co courses for parents are, are very, very important.